Some time checks in case you want to skip ahead to the really exciting bits. And if you're wondering where the video title comes from, Shakespeare are most famous for their fishing equipment, including fiberglass rods. But at one time they also made fiberglass golf shafts. We'll be taking a closer look at a fiberglass shafted golf club, then taking it down the range and seeing how it compares against a similar steel shafted club. Fiberglass shafts were first introduced by Golfcraft in 1954, but Shakespeare, using their experience with material, improved on the design and are probably the best known provider of fiberglass shafts. And it was they who provided the shaft for the club in this video. An eight iron by Carnusti Golf of Scotland, their phase one model. Let's have a look at it on the review table. Okay, let's take a look at a graphite shafted club. I've got two clubs here, one with the comparison club down at the range, which is this one. We'll have a quick look at that one first. And it is a uh, Dunlop 8 iron, Tony Jacklin, stainless. And this came out in 1970. I've chosen it to have as much uh, similarity as I can to the glass fibre club. Uh, it's a similar profile, quite a bit of weight at the bottom, exactly the same loft of 41 degrees. It's quite a strong loft uh, that is for this time, but there we go. Um, and it's a, a regular flex uh, Dynalite shaft. As I say though, I've chosen it to be as similar as I can to the fiberglass example. And so we've got, uh, again, as I said, we've got quite a, a similar profile, quite a bit of weight at the bottom. So performance wise, they should be very similar. So let's move on to the fiberglass shafted club. This is the one that we're interested in, really. If we look on the sole, we can see that it's by Carnusti, Carnusti Golf. It's a number eight. And as I say, it's 41 degrees, quite a high toe profile on this one. It's, it has been polished up by somebody. Um, I don't think it would have been this shiny. It's, it's not brand new. It's had quite a bit of wear on it, quite a bit of wear on the, the leading edge there. So I think somebody just buffed over it, uh, which is a shame really. It's, it's lost some of the frosting. But what we're really interested in is the shaft. Um, and I don't know how easy it is to see, but it's, you can see the, the spiral winding of the of the. Uh, fiberglass there at least i think that's what it is or some form of uh part of the manufacturing process but there's a, a spiral wind of the of something I, i'm guessing that it is the fiberglass unfortunately there's no shaft label on there uh, i assume whoever did the restoration on this uh, removed that shaft label which is a little bit frustrating but there you go they also put a uh, a new grip on it but there we go lengthwise it's slightly shorter than the steel shafted club only about uh, an eighth to a quarter of an inch so it won't really affect performance that much but otherwise in appearance apart from the fact that it's a fiberglass shaft it's very similar we've got uh, a ferrule there again as you would expect with a, a steel shafted club and as far as the thickness goes it's hard to say it does look thicker in some places but i don't know whether that's just the color so i will be uh getting the micrometer on these and micing them up and uh well now will be a good time to have a look at that so let's bring up the uh diameters of the of the shaft there and we'll have a look at those the dunlop steel shaft on the left and the carnoustie fiberglass on the right overall weights are almost identical uh, the steel dunlop is a quarter inch longer overall Using the simple balance point method to determine the swing weights, the steel shafted Dunlop comes in at a typical D0, while the fiberglass shafted Carnoustie comes in a little lighter at C8. Shaft tip diameters are identical, although the fiberglass shaft does taper out more to a larger diameter below the grip. The hosel on the Carnoustie club is a bit narrower than the Dunlop. And after that, I think we'll get straight down to the range and see how the two clubs hit. I'd had a bit of a warm up hitting shots with both clubs before I started. So let's uh, begin with the steel shafted Dunlop Tony Jacklin 8 iron. I'm going to hit five shots with each club. So first with the steel and we'll get a decent 133 yards carry. Next shot, even better, 139 yards carry. 126. And these are good distances for an 8 iron for me, even if it is slightly strong. 
And this one was very good, 142 yards carry. And the final one, 141. And now we'll switch to the fiberglass shaft. First shot then. Slightly disappointing 116, possibly me being a bit cautious. The next one still down on the steel shaft at 122. Up to 128 with the third. Back down to 124 with the fourth. Last one. And we get 129. So quite a way shy of the steel shafted results. I know that the uh, graphite shaft was slightly shorter in overall length than the steel shaft but the results are very surprising. I felt I was swinging the clubs the same and yet we've got an over 10 yard uh, gain from the steel shaft compared to the uh, fiberglass shaft. I don't know what to put that down to to be honest. The testing methodology is very scientific and the conditions are rigorously controlled so it can only be operator error. In the previous video on aluminium shafts, I did say I'd like to take the opportunity to redo the test on the clubs. So while I was doing the graphite shafts, I took the opportunity. Three shots with each club, starting with the steel shaft. A good hit for the first one. And on to the second club. And another good hit. These are good figures for uh, the five iron. Final one. And 166 yard carry. Excellent figures for me. Now switching to the aluminium shaft, which was way down last time on the steel. I've got that one away very well. 169 yards carry. Second one, 158. And finally, another one into the 160s. So much better figures than the previous test. Let's have a look at the, the numbers for these three then. This time they're a lot closer, but it's the aluminium that edges it out with five yards uh, advantage over the steel. Uh, ball speed's pretty similar, just a two miles per hour difference. So I think we can safely say that the aluminium and steel shafts, there isn't a lot to choose between them. And I'd like to think that the same is true for the graphite, that somehow I uh, didn't quite um, get my swings uh, the same for each club. Anyway. To finish, we're just going to have a quick look at the history of fiberglass shafts lifted directly from the previous video. Here we go. In 1954, the Californian company, Golfcraft, claimed a first when with the fiberglass shaft, which had a steel core and a fiberglass outer. However, they were prone to vibrate at impact and didn't ignite the golf world. But a few other companies dabbled with fiberglass shafts, perhaps the best known being Shakespeare, who were well known for fiberglass fishing rods. They thought they'd solved the problems that Golfcraft had encountered by using a hollow fiberglass shaft. Shakespeare paid Gary Player to promote the shafts and introduced a Black Knight model. Player briefly represented Shakespeare's, but apparently he used steel shafts painted black to look like fiberglass shafts. And he soon distanced himself from them, as shown by this comment. Fiberglass shafts never achieved any real acceptance from golfers and the material's greater weight and the difficulty of manufacturing to tight tolerances meant that it never caught on and by the end of the 1960s Shakespeare had given up on them. Well, that's as much as I have to say on fiberglass shafts. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!